Hello, I'm Marshall Brown, Executive Director of Long Island Conservancy, and welcome to Little Green Shoots, the program that talks about everything having to do with Long Island and its environment. Uh, our first episode is Killing Mosquitoes Responsibly. I hope you enjoy it. This is terrific. This is um, the first episode of Little Green Shoots. We were going to be um, interviewing uh, environmentalists and discussing uh, environmental problems uh, all, all around Long Island. Um, I mean, uh, there's just such a, a boatload of things we could be talking about. Wow. Um, but we happen to be in uh, high mosquito season and uh, we'll see all the trucks uh, driving around. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I would uh, first ask Kim, our, our host here, she's uh, of course, of uh, uh, KMS uh, Native Plants, and, and also with uh, Rewild Long Island. Um, uh, Kim, uh, if you could review for us how things are done now uh, and, and, and the issues that come up with that. Well, how things are done now is, um, I guess we'll start off with the trucks that are all driving around. Right. So everybody, um, except I, I don't know where to start because I can just go nuts on this. Um, let's take Mosquito Joe, for example. Um, everybody's spraying because they think that's what they should do because they listen to all these companies and if they're not getting their information from them, they're getting their information from Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, so these companies are going around and they're spraying, but what's happening is because they're, like I said, they're marketing it as selective killing and there's no such thing. Um, when they're spraying, they're killing everything. And for some reason, they're still allowed to um, advertise that they're selectively killing just mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas. Um, to me, like I said, I don't understand how this is allowed because like I said, they're killing everything. And that is what everybody's doing. And mm -hmm. when you do spray, which Doug Tallamy, I just read something else from him. He's fantastic if you haven't read anything yet. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Um, when you're spraying, you only kill 10% of the mosquitoes. So unbelievable. Well, yeah, that was, and you know, that's a lot that's of money. security for you. And that's the thing, you know, and, and he comes once a month. And I know, like I said, I'll take my neighbors across the street, for example, because I'm always fighting with Mosquito Joe. Um, but he comes there, I guess it's once once a month. It seems like more than that to me. Um, but he comes and he sprays. And he's also told them that they need to take down the trees. Um, because you know it's creating shade and that's where your mosquitoes are um they have a beautiful woodland property um and they've also told him told them to remove all the leaves mow back any vegetation that's under the trees and keep it dry <laughs> so, how, how many so, how many acres are they sitting on um they probably have an acre like i do how, this so, is so painful to hear i mean i, I can't tell you um and, you know, and, and every year they come to me and they want to put a native hedgerow in and I won't do it for them because I'm like, listen, it's like baiting a bear, you know, and I try to explain to them every time they ask for it, I'm like, listen, you spray, it kills everything. So when you put a native hedgerow and a mosquito Joe comes by, it's like baiting a bear. So you bring all the bees in just to, to kill them. Um, you know, and they have three girls and, you know, I explained to them too. I'm like, have you ever asked for his EPA list? And by the way, everybody, if you see a spray company, you can ask them for their EPA list. And I think they are, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I just lost it, but they have to give it to you. It's just something, if you ask for it, they have to give it to you. Right. Um, or at least give you a link to it. But are we attacking the problem maybe at the wrong level? Because it's to me that this is a regulatory uh, issue. And, yeah. and it, to that extent, it's uh, uh, it's one where the politicians need to be educated as to the implications here. Yes. So like I said, spraying only kills 10%. So, you know, you're basically just killing, you know, that that's not a lot of mosquitoes, but um, so. Now, but there's, a, there's a basically take out all the arthropods. Exactly. Well, you know, and that's, you know, that's, you know, if you want to talk about how to take care of them responsibly, you know, you do basically you go into integrated pest management for them. So, you know, most important, remove their habitat. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing. And it's not that it's the, it's not the leaves. It's not the shade. It's all the standing water you have. 
Absolutely. So you have a bird bath. I empty mine every day. And if I don't, I try to do it every other day. If you don't have the time to do that, put a mosquito dunk in it, but we'll get to those shortly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it cleaned it out. Um, mosquitoes can breed in, you know, a tiny little bottle cap. So you really have to go around your yard and see where you have standing water. And I mean, some people have tires around, which is interesting, but you know, anything, plastic covers, anything, toys, you have children, if their toys are left outside, that little toy truck, you know, with the little bed in the back is a perfect breeding ground for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, just to also empty and change the water daily. If you have a bird bath, empty it, clean it, put fresh water in it. Um, you know, fountains, rain barrels. I mean, there's there's so many things that just need to be cleaned out if you have them also. Mm -hmm. Put a mosquito dunk in it. Now, now I've heard that, uh, you know, of course, mosquitoes are weak flyers. So if you get yeah. bitten by a mosquito, the odds are what, 80% that it was spawned within 100 feet of where you are. That's so that So that really underlines the fact that this is a problem that it's it's really up to you to manage. Absolutely. Uh, and if it's if the spraying only gets 10%, you can get a lot more just by being uh, vigilant. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, like the kiddie pools, that's another thing people, I've seen people just leaving the kiddie pools full of water. And I'm like, how would you, first of all, your kids in it, how do you not change that? But that's another story. Um, but, you know, what we need to do is control them at the larval stage. And that's where you're really going to do most of the damage when it comes to um, keeping mosquito populations sure. down. Well, just one more quick observation before we get to uh, the, the larval stage here. Um, people just running their sprinklers, you know, they're uh, just asking for so that's, that's, you know, that's, I said, I have that. That's as a thing to touch on too. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, you run, I have, my neighbor runs a sprinkler four times a day. Doesn't understand why he has fungus in his lawn. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> Um, you know, and he doesn't understand why he can't sit outside after four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you know, it's not that they, they don't breed in grass, but they do shelter there. So the wetter the spot, the more um, attractive it is to the mosquito to shelter. Most, yeah, most mosquitoes are uh, dust to dawn, but we now have that Asian mosquito, the uh, what is it, the tiger mosquito, mm -hmm. um, it's just 24 seven. Um, there's no oh, such different there. time zones, you know, and that, and that <laughs> but I said it's out during the day. So, you know, mosquitoes when I was younger, I remember you never saw them during the day. It was when the sun started to go down and then all night. And then when dawn hit, you know, they were yeah. gone. Now it seems that they're just they're all the time. We're being um, hunted down. Yeah. Um, and, you know, another place also uh, drainage holes in your garbage cans. You know, a lot of people don't realize that garbage cans hold water. And even though they're being dumped out once a week by the garbage collector, um, you know, that if you have a hole in that garbage can lid, water is going to pool in there. And guess who says, well, this looks great. It's mm -hmm. dark. It's humid. It's moist. And there's, uh -huh. a, there's a lake at the bottom. <laughs> well, let's, well, let's, uh, I, it, that's a great segue to mosquito dunks. Yes. <laughs> so mosquito dunks. So mosquito dunks are absolutely fantastic. Um, and they cost a fraction of what it costs to have the um, killers of everything come in. Right. Let's um, talk about that fraction for a second. How much did that cost you? The six pack? I think it's like 10 bucks, right? It's 10 like bucks. That line. Okay. Yep. How, many, how many dunks can you set up with the six tablets in here? So you can set up, I call them like the bucket of doom. So you can set up 12 <laughs> traps. Yeah. Well, so 12 you, or even 24 if you use. Or even 24, if you have, depending on the size of your bucket, I use, um, I guess you call them spackle buckets. Right. That's what I use, so I put half half of one in there. Um, right, I use, I use the same. And so, so basically, uh, you have to change them every month. So that's uh, basically four, uh, 12 months worth of, worth of yeah for one yeah. bucket and remember now you know with climate change you know last year we didn't have a winter there were mosquitoes out in february yeah uh, you know and um i'm just thinking also your gutters keep your gutters clean 
Yes, very important. <laughs> but you can, you can I, I've learned how to toss the, the, the on the ah. roof and go into the gutters. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a little practice. You can do it. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and fix leaks. That's another thing. Like, you know, if you have a hose um, spigot that's leaking, fix it because that's another place for mosquitoes. But mm -hmm. the bucket of doom, like I said, what you use these in is absolutely fantastic. Um, how many, how many I, buckets I have, do you have set in, in your Right yard? now I have two and I think I need more. Um, I've been wanting to set them up forever and I finally did it this year, but I only have two and I'm sure I need a lot more because I have an acre here. Um, but like I said, I have noticed a difference even in that because I have them in like, you know, because I'm always on the side of the house. So that's where I have a bucket just off to the side there. And then I have another one on the other side of the house. Uh, but, what, are, what are the prospects uh, of uh, enlisting any neighbors around to say, hey, this is really working for me? You know, it's it's really and, and like, here's a bucket. Put it on your property. You know, it's it's really hard. Like I said, you deal with someone who takes Mosquito Joe's advice as, you know, the word of, you know, the Bible there. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor with all the grass and everything, you know, he's in, he takes he gets all his information from Home Depot. Um, yeah, I've stopped giving him advice. He's asked. Well, I would just, you know, maybe just subtly. I mean, I, I've been wanting to have a uh, Long Island Conservancy branded mosquito dunk bucket. Yeah, uh, you know, actually, I know some there's some groups that actually have, you know, created them as here's the package. Use oh, it. yeah. And little yeah. little QR little QR code on it to explain why. So exactly. we're gonna get into that. What do you, you think? Know, I should probably put a set one up in the front, you know, where everybody walks by. Of or course you that. should. Yes, yes. Yeah. What's that? Oh, you know, oh, I, I, I'm able to go out in my yard and 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 not be bitten to death. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's, it's you know, it's oh, we have a question down here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, so what happens? So yeah, we might as well explain what a bucket of doom does for us. Irene, you have a question too. Oh, I think you muted. Hold on. No, that was my question. Oh, that was you. Okay. So Irene asked, um, "Does the bucket of doom act as an attractor to kill them away from any dampness I may have missed?" So basically, what it is is it does attract them. So what you're getting is the female who is the one who bites you. She needs blood to actually produce eggs. Um, so what you do is you create, so the bucket of doom, like I said, it's, you know, a spackle bucket or whatever bucket you have, and you want to use a dark color. So like blues, blacks, browns, anything dark. Uh, if you have a clear bucket, spray it. Um, interesting. Why, why would that be? So the dark, see, and it's funny, like mine aren't, well, my, one of mine is, and the other one's one, it's a, it's a tidy cat's bucket. Um, so it's like that cloudy white. <laughs> they work too. <laughs> Exactly. So I actually experimented with that. And you know, honestly, it's funny, I find more in that bucket than I do in the other one on the other side of the house that's um, in a dark blue bucket. But you're supposed to use a dark color, because first of all, it heats it up. Um, and it's just mosquitoes, according to um, some like I think the CDC and everybody, they're attracted to dark colors. Um, if you're wearing, like I said, they even say wear light clothes if you're outside. Oh, so it's a much harder to see with that background for one. And that's exactly what it is. So they say use a dark color bucket plus the sun hitting that, like I said, warms it up and keeps it nice and ripe. Nice and swampy. Uh, yeah, well, well it's it's right. right. <laughs> um, so what you want to do is you put straw in there. I didn't use straw. Again, I just use weeds that I was randomly going around the yard and going, oh, there's a bucket, throw it in there. So mm -hmm. basically, I'm just using weeds in mine. Um, I do have a stick. But what, what, what do the weeds do? So the weeds ferment. <laughs> just like the straw. So just we'll call it fermenting. Um, about three, three handles, inches. I think, yeah, I think, well, you, well, they say to fill up the bucket. I only have mine at half. Okay. And yeah, because we've been getting a lot of rain, which sounds funny, but we've been getting a lot of rain the last two weeks. So I'm kind of leaving it at half when we're getting a lot of rain, because what happens is, you know, when it rains, it's going to overflow and then you're losing all the dunks. Right. Um, but you want to fill it at least halfway with uh, straw or, like I said, weeds or whatever you have that will get in the water and ferment. And then you can cover that with water. Well, the, 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 fer the fermenting process does what? It, it attracts the mosquitoes more readily? Um, it attracts the mosquitoes because, you know, as you know, mosquitoes like 
dank, swampy, nasty water um, because that's where their larvae can live and there'll be plenty of nutrients. Oh, in the food for the larvae. Yes. There we go. So, which they're actually really kind of cool if you've ever looked at them under a microscope. Um, <laughs> but so what it is, so the female is going to come and she's going to lay her eggs in that bucket of doom. Right. When she lays her eggs in that bucket of doom, I don't remember how long it, it what does it take about, is it a week or so? But I, I'm sorry, I don't know. When, they, when they hatch, right? So when they hatch, what happens is that mosquito dunk is in there. And now I am not exactly sure if they're eating or is it just the BT, is it BTI, right? Yeah, BTI, yeah. BTI. So the BTI is actually in the mosquito dunk. And but, this gets- Bacillus, yeah. Yes, and this gets into the water. And what happens is um, the larvae will eat it, but they die. Like they don't, like as they're, they're gonna die because it kills them. And by the way, it's not toxic to anybody else except for mosquito larvae. So- Well, actually there are two other, there's the black fly uh, yes, yeah. And, and 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 the fungus gnat. Now I don't I don't know if those either of those insects have a a, a, a strong constituency. Uh, but, but yeah, the gnats. Yeah, the gnats. We really. I we have an issue. I don't know if anybody knows when you walk outside and they're all in your face. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that drives me crazy. They, they, they must go to. Yes. Sorry. Well, but oh. you no. Know, and you look at the other one. But people, things eat them. But that's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. um, so what happened, like I said, so you're killing them at the larval stage and that female only lives for two to four weeks in that area, depending on the species. Um, so like I said, she's going to lay her eggs, but that next generation isn't going to make it out of that bucket. So you're actually killing. So she's going to die and her offspring is not going to make it. So that's what happens. And a female can lay what is it 200 eggs at a time i think it is oh wow um, yeah so that's a lot of eggs and i just read something just before this because i was just curious mm -hmm. um are you ready for this one all righty the eggs can survive for several years before being submerged with water holy mackerel yeah that i just got it had that fact and wow. i was like that is disturbing so even if you have I guess damp soil somewhere on the property and that mosquito laid its egg there the next time it floods those eggs can hatch but they can it can be several years and i was Jeez. like that's just disturbing yeah <laughs> so um <laughs> there, there's so many things you know it's just like you know and now you know along with you know the bucket of doom well, BTI um, is a naturally occurring soil bacteria, so who yes. knows? Maybe we can treat it as a, a powder. <laughs> no. You know, and that that's it. It's like so how so instead of you know spraying all these horrible things that are killing everything, should we come up with something where they can spray BTI? I mean, does that sound crazy? But um, you know, because the, there has to be more ways to do this, but responsibly. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. You know, so I'm just yeah. Just, oh, and also along with mosquitoes, there's 170 species in North America, and only 12 of them will actually feed from you. 12 species feed from you. Um, it feels like many? we have all 12 here, but <laughs> I don't think we do. I don't know the number of how many species that's, we have. That's here. fascinating. And so, right? yeah, I mean, all these insects, no matter how horrible to us, are, have an ecological niche. Yes. Uh, so to be able to surgically remove the, uh, the the biters, but hold on, does it kill all twelve hundred of those uh, uh, varieties of mosquitoes? You know, and that that's the thing. You know, does it does it kill them all? Like I was just actually talking to well, not we were on Facebook, and I had mentioned um, because if it kills all mosquito larvae, I don't know. If, well, most people aren't aware of the elephant mosquito. The elephant mosquito actually eats mosquito larvae. It's larvae, yes. it's mosquito larvae. Oh, yeah, beautiful I'll tell you. creature. Yeah. I'm, gonna t I'm gonna tell you a story about mosquitoes. And uh, so we went down to South Carolina, um, Kiwa Island. Uh, it's all it's all Martian swamp. Yeah. 
and uh, we're have a, gonna have dinner on the veranda now in the south when they say veranda they really mean it. it's just it was just enormous like yeah. you know, hundreds of feet long literally and we're we're on uh we're overlooking a golf course and it's just getting to dusk but th there must have been you know 50 tables outside and uh -oh. we're like you know please uh -oh. can you get can you can you take us inside and, <laughs> and they're like we'll, we'll we'll see what's available and so up come the dragonflies, like the the, the yeah. colors in, in the apocalypse now coming up, rising over <laughs> the hills. And they're like, tick, 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 tick. And then behind them, the bats. Yes. Within within um, 20 minutes, yeah. the problem was gone. And yeah. it was all gone because um, there were dragonflies and bats, which I remember there were a hell of a lot more growing up here than I see now. I have a lot of dragonflies here, and I also have a lot of bats in the evening, um, but I'm still being bombarded. So that makes me think, how many mosquitoes do we have that the, like, I, ha I can count at least 20 bats at night. Um, and and it's funny, like, you get, you get to know them because they all have their own little patterns. Um, wow. Wow. And, and dragonflies, I have them all day here and in the evening, and... I said, mosquitoes love me. There are just some of us who, no matter what you do, they just come to take the uh, That's because you're so sweet. <laughs> I heard it's the carbon dioxide, we admit. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really know. I try not to breathe. When I'm that is. I know, right? But you're, 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 you're expiring. It's coming out of your pores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, I have mosquitoes. There, uh, frogs eat the mosquitoes. Fish eat them if you have a pond. They'll also eat, you know, um, the mosquito larvae, which, by the way, um, like I said, the dunks don't bother fish or frogs or anybody like that. Um, it's, you know, it, it's just there's salamanders, which I haven't seen in ages. They eat them. Fish eat them. Bats eat them. Dragonflies eat them. Spiders eat them. There's so many insects that rely on them. So do we need to eradicate them or are we really messing with the ecosystem if we do also mm -hmm. well then that brings us to uh vector control mosquito spraying uh and the way that decimates uh, marshes and turns them into giant gigantic mosquito ditches yes yeah. if you destroy the food web um you got mosquitoes and in a way that's also job security yeah, and yeah, oh, the, the Suffolk County vector don't even get me started on them. Well, um, but the good news is that they are leaning more more to BTI. Yes, and yes. it's partly because uh, we're starting to see some uh, politicians uh, seeing the light on this. Yeah, and um, you know, that's that's we don't have much that, marsh left. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. It's like you know, we need to raise awareness of this. You know that. There, there are ways to do this without killing everything. And that's that's detrimental. I mean, it's just something that that really and like just educating the public and you know, on like I said, is like how do we get it out there though? Because like to me, I think this brings us back to how are they allowed to market that it's selective killing? Mm -hmm. Um to me that's false advertisement, but at the same time most of the homeowners that are hiring these people don't know that it's killing everything they're listening to the sprayer and he's mm -hmm. oh yeah you know it's just killing the mosquitoes and the ticks and the fleas and and the people are believing that and we have to get it out there that that's not the way it happened so like i said i don't understand why they're allowed to market it that way so that to me is something else that needs to be addressed, you know, that it needs to be said, we kill everything. You know, I mean. Well, here's the thing. Uh, they have a rather large megaphone. These are billion dollar yeah. corporations after all. Uh, and, um, you know, people don't know any better. So the whole purpose of uh, establishing this as a, uh, at first a Zoom cast and soon podcast and and a youtube video we're building a library of um important environmental information about long island 
uh, we're um, going to uh, jump into the dirty dozen, the, the top 12 invasive plants on Long Island. We did a, a press conference yesterday with um, uh, Fox covered it, uh, Newsday covered it, uh, um, and CBS uh, covered it. Um, but um, it, it was with the, the Science Museum in Long Island, the, the town of North Hempstead, um, and uh, Sands Point Preserve. And uh, we see this same problem. Like, how do we break through to the public? How do they get to recognize uh, the problem of invasive plants? And you just got to keep hammering away. Um, this uh, this content that we're making here is evergreen. It's something that uh, people will be able to refer to again and again as they uh, really start to look at mosquito control and uh, and and, and uh, look to ways to do it without, uh, as you were saying, killing everything. Yeah, well, I'm just answering someone's question. Um, right. So it's really it's it's um, uh, it's going to take a uh, a concerted effort. It's going to take clever marketing. I think uh, having those branded buckets, whatever. I mean, rewild should get on that. Absolutely. If, I, think, if, um... I mean, we'll do it with you. How about that? I think Northport Native Garden Initiative actually does a bucket of doom package, um, which well, if if they do, then we need to celebrate that. We need to have them on and tell absolutely. them about the bucket of doom. You know, um, this is about building community, getting all the plant people together, and that's um, and that's the biggest thing. You know, we all have to work together. Um, it's not it's not just a me thing. Um, when it comes to native plants and the environment, we all need to be on the same page and help each other. Um, and that's, and I think that's what makes our group of, you know, people just so amazing because, um, like I said, I've been in the business for 23 years and even five years ago, um, you know, I would talk about native plants and insects and people were like, oh, you, you crazy bug lady, you know, the native, the weed woman, you know, <laughs> she's That's someone up. else these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it's just, but, you know, now it's, it's amazing that how many of us are on the same page. And I just love meeting, you know, new customers and people through Rewild and people like Marshall and you know, we're all on the same page and we can make a difference, but we have to come together to do it. It's nope. not an individual thing. I had a question. Yes. Sure. Hi, just um, going back to the mosquitoes. Sure. I, on my property, I've been chipping away, putting in um, native items. You know, it's a, it's a big task. I certainly don't have the property you have, but my <laughs> husband and I are very cognizant, you know, chemicals and I'm trying to get rid of the lawn, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> However, my neighbors on either side are not aware, caring, or receptive, take your choice, mm -hmm. of any suggestions when they complain to me about mosquitoes. You talk about tires, you talk about kids' toys, you talk about the trampoline, um, the, the trampoline. pool and everything. So I just purchased mosquito dunks, and I plan to put them up. However, I can only do so much if they're flying over from one yard to another yard. And as you said, those tiger mosquitoes changed life about four or five years ago. Absolutely. So I'm willing to set, you know, bucket of doom traps all over. But just as a curiosity, how far do they usually fly? Because they're not just going to stop at the fence because they know Irene has the bucket of doom. You know, and it's very frustrating. Oh, so they, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, they they usually, um, like I said, they're usually within uh, 100 yards of where they actually. Uh, were born. Yards or yards or feet? I heard feet. Uh, feet, yes, 100 feet of where they were born. Mm. But I also read that some can fly 10 to 20 miles in search of blood. Oh, great! <laughs> but I don't think they have to do that here because there's blood everywhere. Um, it just sounds, so this I don't know, get, get, caught, get caught up in the gale maybe, but that sounds, that sounds specious. I will, I will yeah. add also that I'm on uh, the newly formed leadership committee of the Valley Stream Community Garden, which we've been trying to put in the works for years. We finally got seed money, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
part of my input is going to be because uh, we have Rebecca from Rewild. Say Rebecca, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah Rebecca is going to be involved a bit as well. I'm on the guidelines committee. Every gardener will be made aware of all this and why when we put up a good hedgerow and have a good system going on, it will attract and we could make our own little wonderful ecosystem, hopefully. Yeah. So I will say that we're doing what we can in our group to spread the word through Valley Stream Beautification. And, you know, it's like you said, it's little bits, but the immediate aggravation is it's darn uncomfortable in my yard. <laughs> you know, and, and that's, you, know. That's it. you know, it's just, you know, my neighbors only because a lot of them spray. Um, and like you said, you have people around you who just don't care. And they spray um, and they use pesticides and their lawn is phony baloney green. And exactly. And that's exactly what I'm surrounded by, except for my neighbor across the street who's woodland. But that's another story I guess right. I said earlier. I'd love to do that, but uh, we're we're not in a general consensus in the household yet. So I well, and that's, you know, that that's another thing, you know, like it's so funny because like when people come to KMS, first of all, I'm in a residential area. So, you know, people drive in and they see how many lawns I'm surrounded by. And then they come here and they're like, this is an oasis because we don't use pesticides. We don't use herbicides. We don't use fertilizers. There's leaves in the bed. There is no lawn. Um, you know, it's and yeah, I'm like, you know what? I love it. And my neighbor's like, I don't understand how you don't spray. And I'm like, I don't have to. My yard yeah. takes care of itself. Yeah, I really can't be in the yard after five unless I'm down. Like I have to be doused in something all day. But mm -hmm. you know, at a certain time, I just know it's it's not happening, and I either need to go in or put on more clothes. Um, but you know, my my yard is its own little ecosystem, and it takes care of itself. So you know, like we have the bats. We like I said earlier, like the dragonflies. We have frogs. We have. Um, you know, there's spiders, there's, you name it, it's here. And it's taking care of something. Um, and on top of that, the bucket of doom, but still they're just, they're a nuisance. And we just have to figure out how to do it and how to get the word to all the people next to us. Like, you know, I was sitting in the yard yesterday and, um, well, two days ago, and my new neighbors next to on the one side, they're all lawn um, and they put in a pool and, all I heard was the kids screaming about the bees and people were chasing the bees away. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to like lean over the fence and be like, what's the problem over here? Do I need to come over there? <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's like, they just look at me like I'm just this crazy woman who plays with bees all day. Um, yeah, I well, we need, we need um, good visual storytelling. We need to be able to move people. Yeah. Uh, it's argument science will not, work as a first move um you know people will care what you know if they know that you care yeah. and that's it's it's hard to get to that point when your first reaction is how can they be so stupid um and so uh, how do you uh, i'd say just manifest what you're doing put out the the, the buckets and a little qr code there if they're curious and don't concentrate necessarily though on those that you that are the hard cells. There are so many people who are rallying to this, especially people under 40. I'm seeing this yes. a lot. And yeah, that and, they, and that's what counts for the long haul right there. I'm actually seeing a lot of under 40, and I'm also seeing a lot of over 70. That too. That too. Right. It, I, and it comes down to legacy. Yeah, and, and it just, it blows my mind. I help a gentleman um, do a full plant sale in uh, Merrick for the Knights of Columbus every year. And the first year he came to me because he was reading, you know, just about native plants and he had mentioned it to the Knights of Columbus and he was, he wanted to do the native plant sale. He was all nervous, you know, because we did 200 plants. Um, we did a pre-sale, but he had to have all 20 of each variety. And I delivered them, the, he does it Memorial Day weekend. So I delivered them the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. And by Saturday, he was sold out. So, you know, and he was just, he was so surprised and just so excited that there were that, he didn't know that there were that many people in his community that were, you know, for mm -hmm. native plants and looking to do this. And 
you know, there's a lot of us out there and we just need to find each other. Um, well, to that point, uh, you were on the email distribution list, uh, hog um, uh, or, organic farm. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're willing to host a, um, a native plant sale there. Um, was it October uh, 5th um, right. in the afternoon? And so uh, we're, 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 we're banding together all the uh, uh, local native plant growers and, and, and uh, uh, the um, Post Moro Foundation uh, will, will be involved. Uh, um, but, uh, and, and a thousand yards, uh, the organization in. in yeah. uh, so just getting us, us all under one roof to, to get to know each other. Um, I mean, this last six months have been so wonderful. Um, the, the people I met along the way and getting to know you better and, and your organization. Um, this is all coalescing around uh, a, a collective effort. Absolutely. You know, and, and like I said, you know, it's, you know, I just wanted to also go into just um, like some of the toxins they use in the sprays. Yes, indeed. Methoprene, let's go. You know, it's, you know, right. I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but if you read statistics and everything now, pet and ch uh, child, um, pet and children cancer is way up. Um, now, when you look at, like I said, always ask for the EPA list from these companies and look at the ingredients because they will make your mind will be blown. Um, so a lot of them are using pyrethroids, which are synthetic versions of pyrethrin. Um, and this is highly toxic to dogs and cats. Lovely. Um, yep. Or organophosphates, also toxic to dogs. Um, permethrin, also toxic to dogs. And DEET, highly toxic to dogs. Oh, geez. Um, I had no yeah. idea. So, so that, I mean, you're looking, and, and that's just, you know, some of the chemicals you'll find on their list. And some of these lists can have like 25 ingredients and... They're like, well, it's natural, so it's not a problem. That's another issue. It doesn't matter whether you're whether you're spraying. It's, natural it's, it's made out of the hundred three. Made out of the hundred and three elements. Is that what they mean? It, it, yeah, you know, and that's the thing. I'm just like, yeah, you know, arsenic is also natural. Um, you know, and it's just this whole. You know, like I, again, I'll use my neighbor as an example. You know, like he went out and bought himself his electric car. He has an electric lawn mower. But he waters his lawn four times a day. I swear he fertilizes it once a week. Mm -hmm. and, well, you could say, you know, you realize the lawn is an invasive plant. And, you know, and I'm, I, like I said, I'm also a certified nursery landscape professional. So, you know, he's always asking me questions, but never heeds my advice. So one day I was finally like, stop talking to me because <laughs> you don't you don't listen to anything I say. And I, I don't have the time for that. But, mm -hmm. you know, and this is also a neighbor, you know, he put in a hedgerow of burning bush. And I was like, are you kidding me? But that's a whole nother. Right, right. Well, <laughs> I, would, I would say as far as this particular battle is concerned, what would be really useful would be to have um, a, a graphic with each of these uh, compounds you mentioned uh, and what it's harmful to. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and so people could say, okay, here's, here's, uh, here's the, top 12 toxins that you would find in these products as a as a flyer you know it's, it's, it's like how do we get a flyer out there you know and and i'm just going to say something else too well, somebody, somebody, you know, a, 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 a post something to download yeah and also you know scott's products um that three in one doesn't just kill grubs <laughs> you know most fertilizers include neonics which kill bees um there's that um you know, there's just there's and, and regular, so regular fertilizers will kill kill the fireflies and the cicadas in the ground. And well, that's the thing, you know, when you're you, you know, Mosquito Joe again across the street, he comes and he sprays, and he sprays the ground only. And you know, they have little kids. Well, they're getting older now, but they have little kids across the street. And I'm like, do you like fireflies? And they love them. And I was like, well, you're not going to have any if mom and dad keep spraying there because fireflies. <laughs> that's yeah, that's me on that person. Um, you know, fireflies have a two up to a two year. Well, their lifespan includes two years in leaf litter. So if right. you're spraying that leaf litter, like I said, you're killing everything. And, you know, therefore, there's no fireflies for your kids to enjoy. Um, you know, it, it, that's where you have to hit them. 
Mm -hmm. you know, with, with things like that, you know, like I remember when I was little, just fireflies were everywhere and they were just so much fun to catch. And, and that was, that was summer. That meant summer was here when the fireflies are here. And, you know, and I saw August that when you heard property. the cicadas <laughs> and the cicadas, you know, and it's just, you know, and that's, you know, that's me. I say that to the kids, you know, cause they come over and want to see what I'm doing, which I find amusing. And it, it's really eerie. I, I, recently moved back to the house I grew up in Candy Avenue uh, and I, I'm walking down the street at night and there's a yard alive with lights and buzzes and then nothing, 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 nothing. then another one and yeah. it's just so obvious what's happening. And that's, you know, that's, that's another, well, lights, that, that's another thing, you know, between, you know, fireflies and I'm that yard too. I have fireflies and nobody else has them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, just lights in general, like electric lights. Light pollution. Yeah. That's, that's a whole that's, other thing. Well, you know what, you know what, Kim, I, we've, we've really, I, we've covered this ground, I think extremely well. In terms, of, in terms of killing mosquitoes responsibly, we didn't get to fans and centronella. And yeah, I think said set up a fan because mosquitoes are you know bad flyers. So if you have a fan, get a cheap one, throw it out on your patio or wherever you're working. And that's what I do. That's another or, thing. Or you know, a full radiation suit also works. I find. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had another question. Sure. If I know putting in native shrubs grasses anything attracts native pollinators which not only pollinate attract other birds then they could eat the mosquito so it's all a package yes i'm probably going to be starting very small i'm not in the situation to rip everything out frankly i might have to like sneak it in someplace because okay. Um, it's not always a calm discussion between my husband and I as to how radical to go. So if I took out one big plant in my yard and I put in, it's kind of shady, so I, I, it won't be a milkweed, but I put in something, but I still have non-natives around. Is that any help or is it like all or nothing? Absolutely. Because I've got to um, start small financially and. And that's the way you should start. <laughs> um, yeah. I recommend that to people also. So when you do start it, don't come to me with the entire blueprint for your property. Mm -hmm. Start in a little spot. Okay, um, and that could still be helpful. Absolutely. If you come here, when people <laughs> come here, they're like, you have hydrangea? You you have, you know, Andromeda in your yard? Yeah. There's Anthony's no, business know. is right near me. And yesterday, oh. actually, we did a workshop on native hedgerows and all. So yeah. not to, you know, poo-poo your company but you know closer also oh, absolutely and like i said we all need thing. to work together yeah what um, anthony's but, got it's amazing so a yeah. little could be good too absolutely you know like i do presentations for you know hoas and things like that where you know people aren't allowed to plant things no, but you can have planters um you have a patio put planters in you know put planters around it with you know pollinator plants um you know and to me Putting in a plant, they like said, I, I'm not a purist. I, you know, I have a background of ornamentals, natives, things like that. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a mixture. Um, 60, 40, 70, 30, um, you know, 70%, you know, native, 30% um, ornamental is perfectly fine. Right. Um, These are aspirations. You know, yeah, I've got to be realistic and, and. Absolutely. And to me, you know, you, you put in, you know, say you just put in um, a viburnum there. Yeah. Um, that right there alone, I mean, that's just a fantastic plant for, it's a host plant. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's great for um, uh, shade. Oh my goodness, pollinators, shade. Yeah. It's great for pollinators. It's great for the birds because of the berries. Um, yeah. You know, even just putting in one plant they will find it you know like that's the other wow. thing i say if you plant it they will come um thank you you'll be surprised when you when you put natives in absolutely they, they thrive who knew that if you put a plant where it's supposed to be it would thrive and then absolutely. i have so many volunteers all over my yard from from yeah. uh, things that have gone to seed okay, i just gotta uh, get each, started each year it get it builds and builds it's yeah. very exciting and, and like i said and absolutely start small you know like i said and like they said just like anything else, if you start too big, you're going to burn yourself out. 
um, you know, but but start small, start with a planter, start with one plant and just go from there. And, uh, you know, Let that teach you because, you know, you're you're you're, you're ramping up on this, too. And, um, you know, what you think might work um often doesn't you know I, I i thought it was wet enough here and you know that sort of thing yeah and the nice thing about natives is they're they're very adaptable and you can just keep moving them or <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll, well, they'll move themselves <laughs> exactly that's the thing that's another thing you'll plant it over here and then it might not last over there but all of a sudden you find it somewhere else um and that's you know that's the birds you know they plant them the seed uh-huh. dispersal the wind um but yeah i mean I, you know, even when I do presentations, if I only reach one person, that to me is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to not feel bad about starting small because no, I've got to not at all. And, my housemate to uh, come along for this. <laughs> so and, pick and it's, it it's, a, it's daunting to take on the whole, you know, the whole yard. So like I said, this morning's like a little pocket prairie like Anthony does. That's perfect. Right. Start with something like that. Or like I said, put in a, fruit, a few um, fruit bearing hedges. You mm-hmm. know, it's just, that's, it's the perfect right. thing to do. I mean, if you have an area in your yard that you can let something go wild, put in some common milkweed, but make sure mm-hmm. it's not in your regular bed. I'm in a very shady area, so that person... Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, ferns are great for habitat. Yeah, there's oh. there's a lot. Of, I'm I'm in um, all oak shade here. So oh my, yeah, yeah that's please. my yard is just basically oak shade. Um, the north side of my house is the sunniest spot, which is bizarre. But <laughs> yeah, there's you know you can even put sweet pepper bush back in there. Um, a lot of viburnum varieties will work in full shade. Oh, great. Um, there's some fantastic trees like um, American hornbeam would work back there. Um, I mean, there, there's gray dogwood works in situations like I'm that. I'm full of trees, so I need, you yeah. know, smaller, but I don't want to go into my personal yard. Basically, yeah. I should just get started and Absolutely. stick with it. And I think also could Cornell Cooperative Extension, which I'm always involved with in Nassau, they could also make certain anybody who comes by Nassau, Suffolk, that they know this about all the chemicals yes. in everything. Although there's a certain thought of people who show up there in the first place are probably already on your side, but it doesn't hurt, you know, or even schools when they have plant sales. I don't know. I'd like to go out there with a sign like you, but you, you got to pick where it's going to oh, be. Then, you know, the, the thing with Anthony and I, um, you know, we sell natives. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a, a purist, so I also sell some native bars. But the other problem we're having right now is when people go to different garden centers, and they'll sell them, you know, a hybrid and they'll say it's native. Now, once it's mixed with a non-native plant, it's no longer native. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I don't have a problem with a native R as long as it's actually a sport off something that's actually a native here. Um, like, for example, you know, Agastache Blue Fortune, that's a hybrid with a Korean um, Agastache, I need to hiss up. So that is not a native plant. Once you hit a hybrid, it's no longer has any native in its body. Um, and a lot of places are doing that. And that's where the public is getting very disgruntled, <laughs> you know, because like they'll come to Anthony and I and be like, well, I just picked this up and I'm not going to say the place. I just picked this up at so-and-so. And I'm like, yeah, that's not native, you know? Mm-hmm. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, that's not native. I'm like, you have to be very careful when you go to other places because they'll just sell you a plant to sell you a plant. Um, so really the, the larger project is to uh, become recognized by the public yeah. as uh, being ex, uh, experts in this. So yeah. the more content we generate around that, the, the more uh, uh, of a public resource we can be, the better. Yeah. So this is, this is going to be a process. You got to start small with uh, uh, an episode. But uh, as with our, the planning of the natives, um, you know, we want we want to cover the whole yard eventually. Yeah.